Hey everybody, welcome back in another more of review here. This is uh, Numbani, it's a console game, this is Platinum 4. Player says, uh, honestly, watch your gameplay on Nubani, GM and Gold, uh, in this replay. It's just a few hours after I watched it. Try to flank more, use high ground, and do that fade jump. Failed twice, unfortunately. Uh, please point out what is good, what mistakes I should avoid. I know I should try, not try to copy your gameplay one-to-one, -one, but I felt that using high ground was good. Some flanks here and there. Thank you for your... Thank you. Please do more of these GM and Silver Gold the live commentary. It's very helpful. Uh, actually, yeah, I probably should. I try not to do a ton of them, obviously, because it's smurfing. Um, but all of those were done before the major... Was it Season 8? I, can't, I already can't remember. Uh, kind of the major, like, overall game rework of making... Um, you know, giving heroes more health, having more... Or having larger hitboxes, stuff like that. Um, the reason why that's kind of important is you can't get away with a lot of stuff that you used to be able to get away with. So, um, even like even if I was playing in a gold game, um, I, I couldn't really even probably play the way I was playing in those matches, uh, simply because it's it's pretty easy for Moira to get run over. Uh, so, that said, I probably wouldn't have tried to take the high ground by myself. At least right there. Uh, it, it wasn't bad, because you can you can get out of there pretty easily. Um, but that said, just kind of in the current game state, I probably wouldn't... I just wouldn't have gone up there if my team didn't go up there. But we, what we've been doing so far is good. My one critique so far is, is we have been standing out in the open a lot. We just haven't been getting punished for it. Okay, So, for example... Let's back up a little bit. Okay, we're pushing these folks, right? While we're standing on the point. Okay, you can do that from this corner. And you need to be, basically, as you're walking forward, you need to be walking towards this corner. Okay, because you want to damage, you're damaging the Moira, right? She's the closest to you, half health, etc. You don't want to see him. Right, because a higher rank... Junkrat is just going to kill you. Even he can kill you by accident, just shooting at you, right? The the uh, hitbox for his grenades are pr is pr pretty forgiving. So I would like to see you moving towards the walls. The only time I'll, I'll run out in the open um, is, like, if there's one player left or something like that, right? And I, and I know I'm securing the kill. Okay. You know, it's not like you always permanently have to be hugging walls and stuff. It's just it's a good habit to get in. Because sometimes, um, you know, it's actually really hard for me to make that fade jump too. Honestly, I don't know why it is off of this payload, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, doing it consistently anyway. I feel like we got a little tunnel vision there. It's not a big deal. We didn't really need to use that, but I'd rather secure the kill. So, I mean, that, that's fine. This is good, too. It's just, again, if I'm going to do this flank, I want to be closer to this. Right? And the thing is, I, I can't remember. I haven't watched those videos in a long time. Right? I might not always be doing that. Right? And some of it, sometimes it's a mistake. It's a genuine, like, I'm just kind of not, not even really thinking about it. And some of it's like, I know exactly where everybody is, and I know what I can get away with. Okay? Uh, unfortunately, f for you watching it, you don't know which one of those instances it is. So that might be something for me to to think about uh, and making another one. But that was a good flank. It's a good flank. Uh, I will say that the the flanks that you can still do um, are flanks like that where you are engaging like a, a group of the enemy at the same time that your team is it's just you're you're behind the enemy uh, flanks you can't really do anymore is just go behind like the enemy and kind of stay back there um it, it's it's harder to to get anything done you can live right fade away and things like that but it's harder to actually get meaningful value by yourself like that Yeah, I, I typically won't won't uh, challenge a, an echo like this if she's looking at me. Um, she's ba you can basically guarantee she's going to force out your fade. Uh, there, you know, this echo just wasn't very good. 
and know what you can get away with, right? If their echo sucks, yeah, sure, get in their face. And it, actually, this is kind of a, I mean, both of these ults are out, but this is kind of an example of what I'm talking about. Is like, say you're here on this high ground, and like, you see how you're kind of doing nothing? Uh, your only real uh, use, I guess, usefulness up here right now would be to distract them, to get them to turn around. So your team could push in, but your team's not there, right? So there's there's no reason for you to be here right now, effectively, okay? Because well, one, I, so let's just ignore the tree. It, let's let's pretend the tree's not here. You're not going to really do anything to these two, and your team's not here. So you're kind of inadvertently setting yourself up um, to be out of position uh, when the enemy team gets back together. Okay, so we got out. That's good. But you, you see how you got pushed there and really, like the life reaper is just standing there with his thumb in his ass and the echo can't aim. Uh, you know, it, so if you, you can see how you kind of got pushed there, uh, and if they had better aim and better mechanics, you would have been in a lot more danger. And that's not to say you were going to die there, but it's uh, it's dangerous, and it's dangerous for the risk, right? Typically, you want to do, um, you know, a low risk, high reward, right? And that's not always the case, right? But sometimes I'll do high risk, high reward. But high risk, low reward, I'm probably going to avoid those. Um, so at the start of our coalescence, um, like we had a like kind of a mechanical issue. Um, interestingly, when I try to coalescence on console, I've only played a few times, so like maybe maybe three hours or something. I, that's, what my, that's what my gameplay looks like. Um, so we just got to work on a little bit more accurate stick control. I... I I don't have a lot of insight on that yet. Um, maybe once I can spend some more time um, with consoles, maybe I can offer better advice for that, but at least not now. I like that we held the space. What I didn't like is when we first engaged that soldier, again, we're standing square in the open area. Okay. Because, uh oh. <laughs> I've done it too, don't worry. Um, Because a, a, a smarter Soldier 76, right? So say you're, you're sitting there, you're dueling him, right? Whatever. Um, he gets you low enough that you feel you need to fade, right? Because he gets you within, like, Helix Rocket range, right? Less than 120 health or something like that. Or close to it, okay? So, like, we were staying ba basically kind of right here, okay? So we're dueling him, okay? We force out our fade. He's still there, right? We faded over to here. He should have heard that and also known that you didn't just vanish into thin air, right? You have to exit fade somewhere. Uh, there's only a few places where you can do that where you will not be visible, okay? One is going back this way. One is going this way and one is going over here. This is the dumbest one, right? This would be really bad, okay? Uh, it's, I guess not dumbest. This is the ri riskiest simply because you can get pinched right here. Uh, but I would say this is maybe not the dumbest one. I would say this is the dumb one. Uh, the rest are are viable, I would say. So here is good because you have an escape route here. Um, here is okay. Depends on who's coming out of spawn. And then, of course, here is this is very safe. That said, I'm fine with you going over here because you have the health pack here too. But he could have put a lot of pressure on you really quickly if he would have heard you. Um, which he should have, right? But that's his bad. Uh, but a higher rank soldier will. Actually, not even higher rank soldier, just a higher rank player will. Because the sound of you coming out of fate is actually pretty loud, and I think a lot of people just kind of ignore it. Uh, until you get into a rank where they don't ignore it. Uh-oh. So why did we get caught in that grav? Okay, we got caught in that grab because we're standing out in the open and we got our fade forced out. Basically, you're getting greedy here. Because, uh, you know, you, your tunnel vision on this Zen, but this Echo is shooting at you. 
Okay. So I'm fine with this flank, but we needed to stay here and use this cover and then keep the Echo's attention until you can either force her out or kill her, right? If I have cover, right, dueling the Echo is good because I'll, I'll probably win that duel at least, at the very least, or force her out, okay? Because uh, basically it, it depends on how she cycles her cooldowns, but if she, like for this Echo, for example, right, their aim sucks. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strafe them and then wait till they shoot their stickies at me. If their stickies hit me, then I'm gonna fade and then I'm gonna fade somewhere aggressively so I can keep on them and then they die. they're gonna die at that point. Um, if they get my health low and then I fade, I'm sorry, if they get my health low and then they sticky, I fade, I'm gonna fade to safety, which could literally be right here, okay? And then shoot my healing orb at the floor uh, because you don't wanna get beamed, right? That's basically what you're trying to avoid is them getting to you a point getting you to a point where you're you're in beam range and um, or beam health which is less than half and then uh, and then you're just cooked at that point right so yeah we, we standing out in the open we fixated on this target um, and then we got our fade forced out because we're we're standing in the open uh, and then we faded directly into the enemy ultimate okay yes we got the kill but why is this bad? Right. Why is this not a good trade for you? Right. There's two reasons for me, like why this wouldn't be a good trade for me. One, the Zen spawn is right there. Even with fade, you know, you still have a ways to go. You got probably two and a half fades to get back to here. Whereas the Zen, even with no mobility, can just walk out of spawn or float out of spawn, whatever, uh, and, and already be right here in the fight, right? So you're going to be out of the fight longer than he is. The other aspect of that is... I don't like one-for-one -one trades, um, unless I like kill their tank, basically, uh, which is pretty rare. Or there, there's other caveats to that where I'll one-for-one -one trade, like I know they have their ultimate, and then you know I'm gonna try and get them for to sit out or something like that, right? But just in general, I don't want a one-for-one -one trade for the Zen because that's you're basically saying that your value is equal, and to me, I think I'm more valuable than that Zen is, right? So if I one-to-one -one trade them, I'm doing my team a disservice by dying. Right? Yeah, I'm taking the Zen out of the fight, but who cares? I'm better than him, right? I would rather the two of us both be in the fight than both of us be out of it, if that makes sense. Okay. And it, it, the the instances where I will do the one-to-one -one trade are, are pretty low, right? They're, they're um, it, It's not often that I will do those. But, like, sometimes I'll sacrifice myself for stuff or things like that. Um, you know, and there's there's instances where I'll do that. But, again, all that stuff's pretty rare. And, really, a lot of that's not as... A lot of that's not as applicable until much, much later in the, in the ranks. Okay. All right. So, we got our Fade Force style, all right? Why? Because we're standing in the open. Okay. We well, were going to say, well, I was on the payload. It doesn't matter because the enemy's on the payload. Okay. There's no reason for you to be on this payload when there's an enemy on it. Okay. The only person who should be contesting the payload at that point should be the tank, and it should be, it should be when in overtime. Right. Otherwise, you don't want to fight on the payload. Right. And I've said this in multiple reviews, you know, especially like escort and push maps. Um, where it's like kind of a moving objective, you you don't want to fight on these, okay? You want to put yourself in a position to add value, but you don't need to be on the payload, okay? You are an ancillary um, hero, right? You're not, you're not the tank. You're not, you know, you're not the like front line of your team. There's no reason for you to be here, okay? But even as I said, if if the enemy is on it, Right? Their tank should be contesting it just like he is. He's doing exactly the right thing. Okay? But the attacking team has no business being on the payload right now. The attacking team should be setting themselves up. So you, the attacking team, should be setting yourselves up right, to flex your advantage on him. Right? Because he kind of has to stay here. So he kind of has to stay out in the open. He can use the, the, the cart as cover. Okay? But he kind of has to stay here. Right? Especially since it's so close. So, 
that's that's a, that is an advantage to your team because now your team can use the environment to put pressure on him, right? So let's say your Zarya is just going to walk up main, okay? Just assume she is, okay? If it were me and I was playing Zarya right there, I'd, I'd walk through here, right? And then, you, again, use this cover. Um, in fact, when I was playing Hog, I got a review by a top 500 Hog player. And when I was attacking, it was on this map. When I was attacking, this is exactly where I was on the attack, right? And it was good. I ended up making a couple of mistakes because I ended up coming out too far, right? But... Anyway, I was not going just straight to the point. Okay. So that was a lot. There's a lot to kind of unpack there. Um, but the key takeaway is you need to get out of the open area. Okay. And that, that is in general, right? Again, there's no reason for you to be here. Okay. You standing on the payload with the enemy on it doesn't, get, doesn't provide any value to the team, right? You don't get extra points for that. You don't get, you know, you, do, you don't get anything. Right? You get killed and sent back to spawn. Okay. And right, I'm not hard on people about this because one, well, almost everybody does it. And the reason why they do it, uh, she needed healing. Um, the reason why they do that is because the game kind of teaches you that that's what you're supposed to do, right? It doesn't, it doesn't explicitly teach you that, right? Because this game doesn't really t teach you how to play this game, okay? Um, and it's got a steep learning curve, so you just kind of have to figure it out. So. The intuitive aspect of this game is, okay, we need to move this thing from point A to point B. What's the best way to, the, not the best way, what, how do you do that? You do that by sitting on it, right? As you can see, if your team is on that, it'll move, right? So a lot of people think, okay, I just have to be on it all the time, which is not the case at all. Okay? You have to be on it when it makes sense to be on it. Because every other time that you're on it, Right, you see how he's standing here? He's he's he has he's forced to be here. Okay. Now he, he should be playing probably playing cover a little bit better. I don't know. It's just it just depends. He's in kind of a bad spot right now. Um and he misses hook, so he's dead. He should die here, especially with the tracer. Yeah, okay. Um But that's the thing. He he doesn't have as much of a choice, and he's in a bad spot, especially because he's uh he doesn't have any mobility. Okay. Mm, I, I don't really like that we chase the. Uh, I, I don't like that we chase the Farah there. I would have rather killed the Mercy first. We ended up killing her. Good, this is great. But since the Mercy stayed behind, um, I, I want to put some pressure on her anyway. E even if she had flown out, uh, basically I want to put the pressure on her. Okay, because I want her to panic. I want her to take damage. So maybe somebody else will shoot her, right? Because she's the, she's what makes the Farah Mercy combo strong, right? It's not the Farah. It's the Mercy. So uh, the general tip there is typically when you have the choice, put the pressure on the person that, that can do healing. Okay. Oh, I, I just, I had a, I was actually really confused for a second. I was like, where the hell are you? What part of the map is this? I've never seen anybody stand there before the match began. I was like, I, I, for a second, I thought you were like on attack or something, and already out on the other bus. That was that was really weird. Okay, good. I like this orb. So I. Okay, you did it. Um, I I probably would have shot it a little bit earlier, but I also don't shoot it as soon as the door is open. Um, so that's why I paused to see instead of just assuming you were going to shoot it when the door is open. Okay, so that's, this is good, um, but you can shoot a little bit earlier. I'd say let the doors open, give it maybe a second or two, and, and then shoot it. Because um, that'll give you the info you need. One, it, it'll get you some a little bit of damage. Um, and then two, if the orb disappears, um, you, you know that they have either a Sigma or a Diva or something like that. I hate Life Weaver. I legitimately hate that hero. I would pay money. I would literally pay money. To, to like opt out of life grip. <laughs> I wish that was a thing. That would be fun. Uh, yeah, you guys were a little spread out there and they're kind of diving and that's like the exact opposite of how to handle dive. So uh, now see, this is good. I like your priority here. Put the, prior put the pressure on the healing uh, players. I like your use of cover here, but then we, we go right back out, right? Um, 
you're not you're not taking advantage of the the damage beams range okay if you're if you're standing right here you can damage literally everybody on this point okay where's the soldier you he's, de he's definitely in range that see this is probably i don't know what is that that's probably like nine meters right in game okay your damage beam goes like all the way to freaking here so maybe he's like a little bit more Damage beam goes really far, right? If you ever feel like you get hooked across the map by a hog, your damage beam and hog's hook are the same exact range, right? So use that to your advantage. Now, I know people do this. They close the distance because it's way easier to aim that way, right? Well, we can't do that anymore, okay? Right? Moira's aim is forgiving, but that doesn't mean we, we don't get to have some kind of, right, that we don't get to develop our mechanics. I probably, yeah, I, I feel like we were kind of autopiloting there. I, I would have used Fade already to try and reposition myself to a better spot. We know they're coming around the corner and my team's starting to engage. I don't want to be, like, caught with my pants down or, like, not in the fight. Okay. Look where we're standing. What the hell that tree is for? But anyway. They, we're basically standing on this yellow line and kind of strafing around it. Okay. That we, they're, they're, in in this scenario, there really isn't a worse place for you to be. Okay? I mean, I guess the worst place is you just run up in them. But assuming you're keeping your distance, right, and using Moira's range to her advantage, we couldn't really be in a worse spot. Okay? And I guarantee this is getting you punished a lot in a lot of games. Uh, it, it It hasn't really gotten you punished in this game. But it, 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 I guarantee this is getting you punished. Okay, so now we need, we need to realize that, um, our tank is disengaging. I forgot where she went for a second. Uh, we realize this a little bit late. We are late to disengage here. Okay, so you need to be constantly looking around, and maybe it's harder on console. Maybe it's not, but you you still have to do it. Um, you have to look around a lot and see where your team is in relation to the enemy team. And part of that's your positioning. If you were in a better spot, this would be, it would be more obvious. So say the team's around the corner, your Zarya's here or whatever, okay. I, in that moment, I'm gonna play closer to this and you were a little bit, but then you'll see her walk back, right? You'll see her walk back and then you'll be like, okay, yep, it's time for me to move back too, right? Cause you don't wanna be, oops, talking about the Zarya, so I went to her. So actually, yeah, you're right here by the time you get here. So this this is this is exactly my point. You see her disengage here, and then we stay there. Stay there, stay there, there. Start running back, right? As soon as she broke line of sight of the enemy, you have to be out of there. The reason why is the enemy team, they're gonna shift to the next person they can see. And if that's you, they're going to collapse on you, right? Especially somebody like you who is squishy. And in a in a higher ranked game, that's gonna happen a lot faster. So you need to get you need to get in the habit of understanding when to disengage because the the higher you rank up, the faster all this stuff happens. Hmm. I don't think I like this whole why. You had your fade. Nobody was in danger of dying. And the monkey was basically full health. So I, I didn't didn't really see a reason for that coalescence there. See how we're straddling the, the yellow line again? And now we're on the payload. We don't need to be there, right? Look at these. Like consistently. Okay, now we can hear the hog. So we definitely got to get out of the open. Okay. Part of learning uh, your mechanics and adjusting your sensitivity is make it so when you shoot an orb like that, which is fine, right? 
you need to come in here and you need to shoot at the floor or shoot at the ceiling, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? So it bounces up and down in here and the orb stays in your, you know, your area here, right? Because right now you got a little bit of healing out, out of it and now it's going to fly away, okay? That guarantees it's going to stay there and you can also use a, a damage orb to prevent people from going in there. I'll do that and people spawn a lot. Um, you know, may, maybe not so much this one. I, I typically don't like to get all the way to the spawn on this one, but just for example, like I'll shoot it here. They have to walk through it, right? Because by the time they get here, they've already committed to going this way. Uh, so they're they're either just going to wait it out or they're going to walk through it and take the damage. Okay. There's a ton of maps where you can do that. And, and, and you can do it on this map. But especially on like the last point, when you're attacking, you push them all the way to spawn. Right, you you can you can do that to them there. But again, we got our fade forced out because we're 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 just we're standing in the open, so we just kind of walk around the corner, and there. If you were if you were straddling this corner and just peeking and strafing in and out, you don't have to fade unless he chases you, right? But he you know he's not doing that. Even when you're standing in the open, he's not doing it, right? Because he 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 knows that that's probably a death sentence because there's a friggin' Zarya and the rest of your team there, right? Um, in, in that was good movement. In a um, all right, go back. It was good movement, but this is a really, really dangerous, really, really dangerous duel. Hanzo doesn't even have to friggin' aim anymore, especially to hit the storm arrows. Uh, I was playing a little bit of Hanzo because I felt like I was dying to them all the time. So I started playing it a little bit. It's so friggin' easy, especially at this range, to hit all of your Storm Arrows. It's not difficult. And with the console aim assist, honestly, he, sh he should have at, le at the very least forced your fade out there. But the thing is, is his damage is so fast. A lot of sometimes, you know, he can kill you before you even use your fade. Okay. So... Good movement, though. Uh, and then the next thing is I wouldn't have dropped down here. You know, you're probably... It's because it, you seem to tunnel vision on, on whoever you're, you know, targeting in the moment. Kind of forget about the rest. Um, dropping down there was, was very dangerous. Right? It, he just has absolutely terrible aim. Okay? That's the only reason you didn't die there. Okay? So, unfortunately, that kind of... That kind of flank isn't that viable anymore. If you want to do a flank like that, in that instance, I'm going to come around that, that curve corner there, and I'm going to shoot a damage orb flat against that wall that he was standing against, so it goes towards him and then back, right? And I can make them turn and look at me, the Hanzo and the Life Weaver. That is a valid play, especially if your team's already engaged. You taking two people's attention, that's good, right? And see, he just... He, they don't have to try very hard to hit those shots. I've been actually... I've been absolutely hosing people, like garden hosing people with uh, Soldier 76. It's like you can't miss anymore. And my mechanics are not that good, right? Uh, compared, like, relative to a lot of players in this game. If I played a game in this map, and you saw me play a game on this map, I'm sure you saw me bounce orbs off of this wall. Okay. So... And the general tip there is use the map geometry as often as you can, okay? Any time that you can get an orb into the enemy team without you looking at them, you need to do it, okay? And this is one of those really easy ones, okay? Because if you're standing here and not straddling this yellow line, right, even though you, you can do it from there, I'm just proving a point that you're once again standing out in the street, okay? If you're standing here and holding this corner, you shoot it right there and it goes boop, and it goes directly into them, okay? You just firing those orbs like that. Like, you, you, you would have gotten a lot more value out of that orb if you would have done that. Because right now, you, you shot it at the ground at an angle. So it's going to go through them and then bounce up and then, you know, off into wherever. Okay. Use the map geometry to your advantage. Okay. You see, we did another one there. So what I would have done there, because she's going to walk away anyway, right? I'm going to bounce it, like, off of there. So it goes there and then towards their spawn, right? Because I want to see if anybody's coming back towards spawn, right? That one actually chased her really well. Oh, it killed her. <laughs> so, <laughs> bad example, because uh, she's stupid and died. Uh, so, that's funny. Actually, I want to go back and see what she did.
You see how she's standing out in the open? That's why she took so much damage. She has shadows, or whatever that's called. Yeah, she's just an idiot. She could have teleported to... That's their life, Weaver. Yep. The soldier's right behind her. Yep. That was her bad, right? So, you didn't get that kill because you did it right. You got that kill because she did it wrong. So, I, I feel like that's a very important distinction. It was a good s skill orb, right? Where it just bounces around perfectly and, and gets them. Uh, that, that didn't have to happen. She's just an idiot. Oops. But, nonetheless, I love getting those kills. Yeah, we can't make that jump. Not just not just standing on top and then fading and, and jumping. You actually have to do the thing. You can do it off of these vehicles, though. I don't do it very often. Uh, I don't do it very often, mostly because I don't really need to. And two, I feel like if it's in the heat of the moment, I'm probably just going to screw it up anyway. So I just don't try. And your life weaver goes and dies, right? Yeah, people are doing dumb stuff on both both teams. You see how we're standing out in the open again? Okay, so this soldier has ult. Now, you have fade. So if he ults right here, you could fade. But what if we were holding this corner? He can't even see you. And if he does, if he wants to target you, he has to drop down, which puts him in a very bad situation. Okay? And then you still just fade out. Right? And I would do something cheeky. If he dropped down here, I would fade up here. So, but the fact that we're standing, once again, directly on the yellow line um, makes it easier for you to take damage. And then he jumps down anyway. Uh-oh. Um, so, he shouldn't have ulted there because literally nobody else is there. You guys, you're Zarya standing out in the open. You're standing out in the open, so basically you're going to get your fade forced out. And your Zarya just, she's going to get run over because basically their entire team's there. Okay. You understanding that, what you can do about it, one, is hug the wall. But two, when she starts getting pushed really heavily, you, that's basically your cue to get out. Uh, so he didn't have to ult there, but since he did... Uh, Coalescence is it's not going to do anything. Even if you would have had perfect aim on there, he, he'd, he's still going to kill her. Okay. And sure, yeah, we we could have... If he, if he hadn't gotten life grip there, you could have just faded out. Um, so that's why it was kind of a bad ult on his part. Because even if you hadn't used Coalescence, right? Yeah, they got the kill, but they got the, they got a kill they were going to get anyway. And then the only other person that was there is you, and you can just get out. Right? And then we, we stayed in the area too long, right? We, we stayed in the area too long trying to get at least some value out of her coalescence, and then we died for it. Okay. Another thing to just kind of remember, and this is it's, it's difficult, right? Uh, and a lot of people fall victim to this. They feel like when they press their ultimate button, all of a sudden they're invincible. Uh, so they just friggin' run into the enemy team. I see Genjis do this shit all the time. It's really funny, right? They'll, they'll blade you with like 10 health, right? It, it's not enough. Okay. So coalescence really isn't any different anymore, right? Uh, the the regen isn't great on it, the damage isn't great on it, and your hitbox is bigger, right? So it's not the uh, kind of tanky ultimate that it used to be. I like this. This is good. Okay, now she uses teleport, finally. Um, so you, you have to be extra careful about how and when you use coalescence. That was a really good prediction. Was that, did you predict that? That was really good because I was about to say that Zarya's gonna grab. As soon as she did, got really aggressive, I talk about this all the time. When when a tank get all of a sudden, especially if they're not very aggressive, all of a sudden gets super aggressive, they're gonna use their ult. Yeah, that was that was a f excellent prediction if if you knew that was, if you if you read that. Again, I, I, don't, I don't like this. I don't like this duel. If I'm gonna harass a Hanzo, I'm gonna do it from an angle, and I'm gonna do it from cover, okay? I'm gonna, yeah, I can make him turn around and look at me or whatever, um, but then I'm gonna duck behind cover. I'm not gonna take those duels. I don't recommend it, um, because honestly, even at this rank, because you said you're in Platinum 4, honestly, this guy should be deleting you when you do that. Um, 
So that's just a, his bad. I like that you're holding this space. This is good. Okay, we can shoot. We should have shot an orb already. Uh, one, I would have shot it basically as soon as I came out the door. I would have shot it right there so it goes this way. But now you have the opportunity to shoot it like right there. So it'll bounce and it'll go down and then into them. Okay. So we, we need to be doing that more often, right? We sat on our orb for way too long. And then we got no value out of it because we shot it at the ground, right? So take that little extra split second and aim your orb. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of times for me when I, I will like physically s s completely stop what I'm doing, aim my orb, and then shoot it. It's like a whole process, right? Yeah, we just we just can't we can't be taking this duel. Oh, got diffed by his own <laughs> diffed by his own old. <laughs> that's good. Okay, all right. Well, it looks like that's about the end of it. Um, big picture, our positioning is hurting us a lot. It didn't hurt us a lot in this game, and uh, I, I feel like this you struggle with this in other matches and then just maybe didn't realize it, um, but we have to get out of the open. We have to get off the payload. There's The only time that I ever want to see you on the payload is it's overtime and nobody else can touch. You're the only one that can touch. Okay, That's the only time I want to see you on the payload. Right, at least for a little while, practice that. Get in that habit, because that really that's the case most of the time anyway. Um, it, it's not always the case, right? Sometimes you're going to be riding the payload, right? Because you're the only one there, or something like that, right? The, there, there is no formula for Overwatch, right? It's very dynamic. Okay. Um, I just realized we didn't actually use our fade there. Oh, so we died with fade. That was. Uh, I thought we faded while we were still here and stayed there. Uh, but anyway, so positioning, right? Standing out in the open, staying in the open. Um, that's going to get you punished a lot. So we need to use cover more. We need to use um, use cover more, hug the walls, okay? Stay around the corners as much as possible, okay? So you can, you only see uh, who you want to see, right? You don't want everybody to look at you. So get as few people looking at you as possible, okay? I like the use of high ground. This is good. Okay, this is good, especially this spot because you could come out here, shoot an orb, and then literally walk back to the other side of the high ground. Okay, uh, so this is a very strong position. I like this. Their Hanzo sucks. Their Hanzo sucks, and he still killed you quite a few times. Okay. You again, you could have done that like from a corner and just strafe the corner, and then if they continue to chase you, then you fade out, right? Put yourself in a position to not have to use fade until like the very last second. Okay. So, yep, positioning. Okay, our coalescences um, wasn't a fan uh, of at least two that I can remember. One, we we tried to save our Zarya, and then the other one we we coalesced the uh, full health monkey. Right. Uh, use coalescence to to secure a, a kill. Use coalescence to make space, like push a team back. Right? Because they're all standing out in the open, and you, you can pierce shields and stuff like that, right? Um, so, ensure when we're, we're using our coalescence that we have a specific reason for it, and it's going to get us value, right? Maybe you didn't know that you can't coalesce Soldier's Ult like that, right? That said, if, like, the rest of your team was there, and Soldier used his ult, yeah, I might, I might coalesce, right? And put a lot of pressure on him all at once. But if it's just the two of you, nah, we, it's not going to work, okay? So, let's work on that. And then... Uh, lastly, let's work on our mechanics slash um, orb trajectories. Okay, I want to see a lot more um, orbs against walls versus the ground. Okay, so you try try using uh, the walls as much as possible. So, okay, well, good stuff. Uh, wow, forty minutes. I, I guess I just kept talking. I haven't done a review this long in a long time. So, there we go. Um, that's what I get for uh, rambling. So, all right, well, that'll about do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.